All right, so this video is going to be about uh, magnetic forces. So uh, what are we talking about when one magnet uh, can exert another force on something? So we don't traditionally talk about, in this class, magnetic forces between two poles. We do know that poles exert forces on each other as permanent magnets, but we actually uh, want to talk about something that's a little bit more application-based, and that's a magnetic force on a, um, a moving particle. So I'm going to give you uh, an example. Uh, we have something called a CRT. And that's called a cathode ray tube. Okay, you may or may not be familiar with this, but if you watch TV, especially one on an old on an old TV or an old computer monitor or something like that, you probably have actually been looking straight at a cathode ray tube. Basically, what it is is uh, something that kind of looks like uh, the top part of a light bulb. So we have some kind of filament type deal, and this filament actually heats up. And when it heats up, instead of glowing, I mean, it probably does glow a little bit, but what it does is it actually emits electrons. And these electrons go through a small opening uh, in this cathode ray tube, and it's in a vacuum. Uh, so we have this cathode ray tube uh, emitting electrons. Okay, And this ele these electrons go across a gap, and the gap actually has a magnetic field in it. Okay, And if you remember about magnetic fields, we have our convention that if you have uh, X is, then that magnetic field is actually going into the screen or into the paper. Okay, and then on the other side of that is a uh, screen. Okay, so the cathode ray tube uh, emits the electrons, and then the electrons uh, go through this magnetic field, and it turns out that the magnetic field causes the electrons to uh, deviate from their straight path and hit the screen someplace else. Okay, so the mag magnetism, the magnetic field, this magnetic field, and we use a B for the magnetic field, actually causes these electrons to, uh, instead of go straight like they want to, uh, forces them to hit them someplace else on the screen. Okay, and when this was initially discovered, it wasn't necessarily discovered in a cathode ray tube, but they started doing experiments and they figured out that it only works on moving charges, so there has to be a moving charge. Okay, so that means you have to have a velocity in the mix. Okay, It works on only charges, so it doesn't work for neutrons, so that means you have to have a Q in the mix. Uh, and it turns out that there's also some issue about angles. So the force that uh, a charge will feel is not equal to, but rather proportional to this charge multiplied by the velocity, and then it also has a sine theta thrown in the mix. Okay, this is proportional to, means uh, not necessarily equal. Okay, uh, but doing some further experiments, they figured out that if you actually divide everything over to the other side, so Q divided by V divided by sine theta, then you end up with a constant. And from here on out, that constant was actually known as the magnetic field. And it is a vector because a force is a vector. So magnetic field is measured in Tesla, uh, and Teslas are actually a Newton per Coulomb meter per second. So one Tesla is actually one Coulomb of charge moving at one meter per second, experiencing a force of one Newton. That is physically what a Tesla is. A Tesla is actually kind of big, basically because we have a, a one Coulomb of charge that's experiencing that one Newton of force. All right, so where, uh, where do we use this? Okay, well, let's just do some, some example problems of this magnetic force. So first off, we have a positive charge here. Okay, positive charge. Let's see if I can make that positive a little bit better. There we go. And that charge is five micro coulombs of charge. It's about to uh, go into an area that has a magnetic field that is going into the paper or into the screen. Uh, and that magnetic field has a strength of 0 0.2 Tesla. Okay, the velocity of this particular charge is 2 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. So my question is, what is the force on this uh, particle? We know that we could use the equation that we just got, okay, and that is QVB sine theta. And we got that equation because, hey, if you move everything back over, then it's really just F is equal to Q, V, and then put the B in there with sine theta and throw it in there. So it's equal instead of proportional to. We got that throw that B in there. All right, so uh, let's plug in everything. 
So we have Q, which is 5, and it's micro, times 10 to the negative 6th coulombs. Multiply by velocity, 2 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. Multiply by B, 0 0.2 Tesla. Oh, wait, what is this sine theta? Okay, well, if we take a look for uh, kind of a top-down view on this, we can see, you know, magnetic field going into the screen and velocity going through or across the screen. So what is the angle there? Well, it's 90 degrees, and sine of 90 degrees is just 1, so we don't have to worry about it. All right, so plugging all that stuff in, this times 10 to the negative 6 actually cancels with that times 10 to the negative 6. We have 5 times 2, which is 10, multiplied by 0.2 gives us a force of actually 2 newtons. So that particular charge will experience a force of 2 newtons. All right, let's uh, look at something where we actually do have to worry about the angle involved. Okay, so now we have a positive charge, and that is actually a 6 microcoulomb charge now, moving to the right with a speed of... 3 times 10 to the 6th meters per second. And we have a magnetic field now that is going in, at an angle, and that angle is 45 degrees. That's our magnetic field. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to tell you that the force that this thing experiences is 20 newtons. So the question that we have here is actually what is, stay with my colors here, question that we have here is what is the magnetic field? Well, if F is equal to QVB sine theta, then B, moving things around, would be F over QV sine theta. So plugging in our numbers, 20 newtons over Q, which is 6 times 10 to the negative 6, V, 3 times 10 to the 6th, and now we actually do have an angle sine of 45 degrees. Okay, times 10 to the negative 6 and times 10 to the 6 will cancel. That won't, that won't always happen. It depends on the speed. depends on the charge. It's just I'm trying to make my life a little bit easier here, making up these problems because I can do this stuff in my head. So 6 times 3 is 18. We actually do 20 divided by 18, but now we have this sine of 45 that we do have to deal with. So we'd have to plug that into the calculator. And uh, you can pause it right now if you want to do it yourself, but here is the answer is 1.57, and the unit would be Tesla. All right, that's a coulomb there. I'm forgetting some units here in meters per second. So that is a 1.57 Tesla uh, for a magnetic field. Okay, so I'll give you some questions about this video and maybe another example problem that to have you work for practice. All right.